four years after Dominaria teased the return of the Phyrexians, it's finally happened. It's time to kick some Phyrexian butt. If they still have butts? I'm not sure that's necessary for their new anatomy. Anyway, Dominaria United is about returning magic to its roots, and White Blue embraces that by returning to an old classic, Flyers. Flyers is a solid archetype because being able to get in for damage consistently is its own payoff. It's a very simple strategy and easy to play. There are a lot of Flyers to choose from. Soaring Drake is an efficient body, Mesa Cavalier helps win races, Talus Lookout keeps your hands stocked, and Coalition Sky Knight can add power from one of your ground creatures. Haughty Jin, Jin of the Fountain, and Tura Kenerud are some of the better flyers in the set, and they pay you off for playing a lot of instants and sorceries. Things like Runic Shot, Stall for Time, Talarian Geyser, and Impede Momentum can deal with opposing flyers that might block you, or ground creatures that might kill you. Counter spells like Essence Scatter or Protect the Negotiators also do a great job of helping you maintain tempo. It's unlikely you'll be able to make a deck of just flyers. Clockwork Drawbridge, Knight of Dawn's Light, Academy Wall, and Haunting Figment are all excellent creatures for gumming up the ground. Blue Black is also a spells oriented theme, judging by its uncommon signposts. However, it is more controlling, so tempo spells are out. You want to focus on cards that permanently deal with threats. You can also accrue card advantage from Phyrexian Rager, Phyrexian Espionage, and Micromancer. And of course, Counter spells are still great. Now, Academy Wall and Volsh Tide Turner will help you stall until the late game, and once you've reached it, you can end your opponent with Monstrous War Leech, Talarian Terror, or Jin of the Fountain. You may want to play this archetype if you open Urtai Resurrected, The Raven Man, or Academy Loremaster, whose downside isn't such a problem when you have a lot of instant speed spells. Black Red also returns to an old classic, the Math is for Blockers strategy. It's a simple concept. Play creatures, turn them sideways, count to 20, blow up some of your own creatures. First, you need creatures worth sacrificing. Next, some payoffs for sacrificing them. You can damage the opponent directly with Hurler Cyclops, Garna, or Braids. You can gain card advantage with Phyrexian Vivisector, Garna, or Braids. You can kill creatures with Bone Splinters, or Braids. And remember that just because something is dead doesn't mean it can't be useful. The grave is no obstacle for creatures like Cult Conscript, Eerie Soul Tender, Balduvian Atrocity, and Phoenix Chick. Aww. <clears throat> You'll want to round out your deck with generally aggressive creatures like Flowstone Cavu, Knight of Dusk's Shadow, Rada's Firebrand, and Toxic Abomination. And cheap removal or combat tricks such as Hammerhand, Furious Bellow, Warhost's Frenzy, Lightning Strike, and Cut Down. Domain is back in standard for the first time since Conflux, and it has a massive range, featuring prominently in every green archetype. Hey there, still me. Because Domain is so ubiquitous, I want to take an intermission to talk about cards that will be good in any Domain deck. Which is almost any green deck. That way, I don't have to mention them in every single green archetype later on. First, any card that helps you find more basic land types is going to power up your spells, and therefore be useful. Second, if you're splashing more than one color, you may find it useful to include extra mana fixing in the form of Salvaged Mana Worker or Relic of Legends. Granted, the more you're splashing good stuff, the less room you have for cards that don't help your domain, but these may be necessary, so it's worth keeping in mind. Lastly, there is a full cycle of common dual tap lands with basic land types. These are vital to increasing your domain. Prioritize them during drafting. It may even be worth running a land that doesn't provide any of your main colors, especially if you have a Slimefoot survey to tutor it up from wherever it may be. Just remember that, as tap lands, they will slow down your game plan. Domain is not an aggressive strategy. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled draft guide. For red-green, it's all about the intersection between domain and enlist. You can use the domain on cards like Nishoba Brawler, Sunbathing Root Walla, Territorial Morrow, Yavamaya Sojourner, and Rada to make those creatures massive, then enlist them onto a creature like Balduvian Berserker, Coalition Warbrute, Keldon Flame Sage, Yavamaya Steelcrusher, or Hexbane Tortoise to create colossal creatures that must be blocked. And if they die, they still leave enormous bodies behind. Other cards that help with this strategy are Twin Twinferno, which can turn an unblocked creature into an insta-kill, especially if combined with Gaia's Might. Rulik Mons and Sprouting Goblin give you more ways to expand your range, I, I mean domain. 
If you need more efficient creatures, look to Molten Monstrosity, Magna Goth Sentry, and Yavamaya Iconoclast. And those creatures can kill the opposition with Bite Down or Tail Swipe. Also, note that the haste on Iconoclast or Viashino Branch Rider allows them to enlist immediately. Green White takes a different approach to Domain. All in all, it's focused on going wide rather than tall. Go Wide is another classic archetype. First, make a bunch of creatures, usually by creating tokens. Then, turn all those creatures into threats with pump spells and anthems. You can make multiple bodies with Argivian Cavalier, Captain's Call, Defiler of Faith, Resolute Reinforcements, or Scout the Wilderness. And you can pump all your creatures with Charismatic Vanguard, Valiant Veteran, Strength of the Coalition. Defiler of Vigor works too, if you have a lot of green permanents, and Griffin Protector and Lanowar Stalker pump themselves based on your other creatures. Other useful cards include Destroy Evil, which is a cheap way to kill a creature too big for your tokens to deal with, Argivian Phalanx, which is an efficient body if you have at least two creatures, and the usual domain package. Although, domain is mostly only useful here for Zar Ojanin and herd migration. These cards can be very powerful, but if you don't have them, I'd recommend cutting domain to focus on improving your creature curve. What do you get when you combine white green's go wide strategy with black red's wanton disregard for life? A bunch of damn traitors, that's what. If you like the sound of a bunch of Borg wannabes taking over our once beautiful plane, all you gotta do is sacrifice your old comrades for personal gain. To generate tokens, you could use the same sort of cards as white green, but you also gain access to the Raven Man, Phyrexian Warhorse, and Cult Conscript. This archetype is a bit more relaxed than Black Red. You can take your time to slowly drain your opponents with Elas Ilkor, pump your Sengir Connoisseur, or draw with Gibbering Barricade. Banalish Sleeper may let you trade a 1 1 for an opposing threat, and Bone Splinters definitely lets you do that. This theme can also focus on the graveyard. Phyrexian Missionary, Shieldred's Restoration, and Eerie Soul Tender can bring back key creatures, and Writhing Necromass costs less to cast if you have a stocked graveyard. White Blue and Blue Black are cool and all, but we're in true Spellslinger territory now. If Balmor and Najal are any indication, Blue Red is all about attacking and casting spells in a tempo based beatdown deck. Electrostatic Infantry, Djinn of the Fountain, Haunting Figment, and Telerian Terror all use your instants and sorceries to spell doom for your opponents. Gitu Amplifier does a pretty good Kiln Fiend impression while removing an opposing blocker from play. With a tempo deck, you want to keep your opponents from blocking by any means possible, and the means here are Impede Momentum, Rona's Vortex, Frost Fist Strider, Jaya's Fire Nado, and Lightning Strike. Hammer Hand can work in a pinch, but be careful of putting too many enchantments in your deck. You need a lot of creatures, instants, and sorceries, so you don't have room for much else. The best spells for this deck are the ones that draw more spells. However, combat tricks can do work here. Shore Up, Flowstone Infusion, Furious Bellow, and Twin Twinferno can protect your creatures and or unload a surprising amount of damage. Black Green took the Go Basic memo to heart and are focused, as always, on the graveyard. Still, they're putting a domain spin on it. Bortuk Bone Rattle reanimates a creature based on how many land types you control, and Urg turns your excess land into power and life. Milling yourself helps both of these goals, and you can accomplish that with Eerie Soul Tender or Urborgoif. Once you've done so, you can get an extra use out of Lanowar Green Widow. As usual, the graveyard deck doesn't have that much support because it doesn't need it. Just take what payoffs there are, and for the rest of your deck, focus on value cards. Phyrexian Rager, Braids' Frightful Return, Urborg Repossession, and Jodas Codex are great options for accruing card advantage. And Terra Sunder, while card neutral, is extremely versatile removal. Because you're looking to slow down the game, Choking Miasma and Drag to the Bottom are great for clearing the board while stocking your graveyard. You only need three creatures in your graveyard to make Writhing Necromance a powerhouse, and once you've leveraged your value to build a giant board, Bog Badger can have the number of attackers your opponents can block. Red White is kind of like Red Black for people who don't like their creatures dying. You know, boring people. It's focused on a mixture of Go Wide and Enlist. Baird is a great example of this, creating a token at end of turn if you have pumped a creature's power. Once you have tokens, Tori de Avenant turns them into powerhouses. You can play the usual token payoffs, but you also gain access to Heroic Charge, Cleaving Skyrider, and Keldon Strike Team. 
Note that the haste granted by the strike team lets them, or any other creature, be enlisted immediately. So whose army will they join? Argivian Cavalier and Guardian of New Benalia are the best, but there are a lot of options. If you need more creatures to enlist, Semite Herbalist is excellent, sitting back while gaining life and scrying. And Take Up the Shield is a great way to let your enlisted creature fight another day. Provided it works better for you than it did for a Johnny. As you might expect, Green Blue is the most late game of all the domain pairs. Trying to play 5 color good stuff is a difficult prospect, because you need to luck into the right balance of lands and powerful spells. Thanks to Green's mana fixing and Blue's card selection, it should be a cinch to get a full domain and play bombs from all 5 colors. To start with, you need a well-rounded early game. Nail, Votus Sea Scavenger, and Vine Shaper Prodigy provide card selection or advantage, while giving you a body to stave off attackers. Pixie Illusionist, Volsh Tide Turner, and Lanawar Loam Speaker give you an early body that fixes your mana. Once you reach the late game, you can dominate with spells like Elvish Hydromancer, Tatiova, Mossbeard Ancient, or, you know, whatever bombs you opened. I'm not going to try to predict what those will be. <laughs> Except for you, Jerome. You will be opening three copies of Timeless Lotus, and I'm sorry. But wait, there's more! Hidden away on a few uncommons is a light defender theme. The goal is to play a bunch of defenders to stabilize the board and then slowly chip away at your opponent. There are three creatures with abilities based on the number of defenders you control. Wingmantle Chaplain creates 1-1 flyers, Coral Colony mills a player, and Blight Pile hits the opponent's life directly. Walking Bulwark is another payoff that allows your defenders to attack, dealing damage based on their toughness. All of these payoffs are uncommon, so you aren't likely to find many copies of them. However, Shield Wall Sentinel is common, and it lets you tutor up whichever payoff you want. The other defenders in the set, Clockwork Drawbridge, Academy Wall, and Gibbering Barricade, are all decent blockers for their cost, so you should have no trouble blocking in the early game. You can also include Floriferous Vine Wall if you want to add green for fixing, which is usually a meme, but in this set it actually might work. Otherwise, this deck should focus on control to deal with threats your walls can't solve and card draw to make sure you find your combo pieces. I always like to look at some of the set's build arounds and come up with cool ways to use their abilities. As Dominaria United is a wide open set with a ton of legends, there are lots of build arounds this time. Danatha, Benalia's Hope, is pretty good on her own, but if you want to make use of her ETB, there are only four options in the set, any of which are good choices, but Haste in particular will make her hit like a truck right out of the gate. Vesuvian Diplomacy creates a copy of any artifact or creature you target with a spell. Any combat trick will do the trick, but Timely Interference costs only one mana and draws a card. If you get Diplomacy, draft as many of these as possible. By the same token, you can use Timely Interference with Ivy to turn this cantrip into a divination. There aren't many vehicles or equipment in the set for Aster's abilities but he does allow you to crew Weatherlight Completed without bothering with Phoresis counters, so I guess if you assemble a specific mythic and rare in the same deck, that's a combo! There aren't really any great combos for Joyra, so maybe stay away from her, unless you want to try to chain a bunch of automatic librarians and meteorites. There are also seven tribal lord rares in the set. A tribe with a lord isn't always actually supported, so let's take a look at whether these tribes are worth getting into. Soldiers are the primary white token in this set, and there are relevant soldier cards too. This makes Valiant Veteran generally good for any white deck. Unfortunately, there aren't many merfolk in this set, and those that there are don't really want to be sacrificed, especially not to fuel a soft negate. Leave Odalian Hexcatcher for modern. Sacrificing clerics to Shadowrite Priest, on the other hand, is a possibility, and it goes well in the white-black deck. Just make sure you know how many good tutor targets are left in your deck so you know when to stop sacrificing. Rundvelt Horde Master can be playable if you have an aggro deck with a lot of splatter goblins, goblin pickers, and squeeze. Just don't expect to hit goblins off the top very often, you're playing this for the stat boost. For Leaf Crowned Visionary, there are 12 elves counting itself. It shouldn't be hard to get your card back, and maybe more to boot, I could see this getting out of hand in a low-to-the-ground deck with 6-plus Lanoir Stalkers. It doesn't really matter if Toxic Abomination or Writhing Necromass have Vigilance. Radadrabic of Urborg is more of a legend payoff than a zombie one. Lastly, Rivaz of the Claw. There are only 4 dragons in the set, and none at common. 
I mean, if you get them, this could be good, but don't take this first and force dragons. In fact, that's the takeaway for all these tribes. You can make a good tribal deck with some of these cards, but it'll almost always start as another deck that just happens to end up with a boatload of elves or something. Don't prioritize the lords too highly. Finally, I'd like to talk about the best commons in each color, just looking at the cards in a vacuum. This is helpful when you aren't sure where your deck is heading, so you can simply choose one of the generically best cards in your color. At number 3, in white, we have Clockwork Drawbridge. Tappers tend to be good and limited, and this one has the added bonus of coming down on turn 1 to block until you're able to start activating its ability. At number 2, we have Argivian Cavalier. Any white deck will be happy to have two bodies for an efficient price, and Enlist gives you a lot of combat options. And the number one white card is Citizen's Arrest. If this card were a pacifism, it would lose points for still allowing the enchanted creature to enlist. Seems R&D thought of that though, so we get an incredible, uncommon level removal spell at common. Moving on to blue, our number three is Essence Scatter, because it is, as always, a great way to remove a creature for cheap. Most blue decks will have a lot of instants, so keeping up two mana won't kill you. Number two is Telerian Geyser. Bounce plus draw a card is excellent, and this one even has some added upside. Also, there are a lot of tempo and spells matter decks, which makes this even more useful than it would be in a vacuum. And at number one, we have Talus Lookout. This is kind of like Organ Hoarder with wings. Yeah, you do have to wait for it to die to get your card back, but if the opponent can't kill a 3-2 flyer, you're favored to win anyhow. And for black, at number three we have Bone Splinters. There are so many sources of expendable creatures in this set that the cost to cast this spell is at an all-time low. At number two, Phyrexian Rager is an eternally solid value card. It'll never be incredible, but always good, unless you're at one life. And number one is Extinguish the Light. It is the murder of the set, and even at one more mana, it shines. Or doesn't shine, I guess? Moving on to red. Number three and number two are Coalition Warbrute and Yavamaya Steel Crusher. I get the sense that Enlist is a powerful ability, especially on cheap creatures or combined with Trample. Time may prove me wrong, but I think these will be very good creatures. And number one is Lightning Strike. I mean, come on. A two mana Lightning Bolt is still very powerful. And on to green! Number three, Magna Goth Sentry is just a solid body. Though a vanilla 4-4 for 4, 4, 4 isn't as awe-inspiring as it used to be, I think the added reach will be important tech against white and blue's many flyers. Number two is Elfheim Worm. Tajuru Path Warden was a beast in Oath of the Gatewatch. While context is important, I'm willing to place my bets on Elfheim Worm performing similarly. And number one is Bite Down. As usual, Punch spells are a great source of removal in green, so long as you make sure to use it when your opponent is tapped out. And lastly, this set has blessed us with a full cycle of dual lands at common, so don't waste it. Just a few duels goes a long way toward perfecting your colors and allowing you to splash with minimal risk. Those are all my thoughts for Dominaria United. I am super excited to once again quench the opposition and complete another plane. All will be one. Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and if you want to see more draft guides like this in the future, remember to subscribe.